Ah! <laughs> what? I didn't know that a simple Stirling generator had gravity. Hello, welcome to Meatball Craft. We're in episode 6. I've just been letting this mob farm run for a little bit so we can get a whole bunch of stuff. I've already filled up a whole chest here of enchanted books and, and half of another one. And all this stuff is, is ticking up. Uh, things like diamonds that we get quite a bit of, like it's 274 in there, which is pretty good. Yeah, heaps of some of this stuff, like almost a thousand of the Inferium Essence, which is, yeah, it's going to be great. I opened up all these intestines and we actually got quite a bit. Um, I got this Dragon Egg Omelette, which gives us health boost 21 for 10 minutes, which is just insane. That's so much health. <laughs> I also got a couple of nether stars from it, which again seems ridiculous, but we'll take it. So in this episode, I'm pretty keen to get into Project E. So that's of course all the transmutation stuff. Now it does need a advanced crafting table, so that's tier two, but we should be able to make it, I think. Uh, I had a brief look at the recipe. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'd be able to make this by now. And of course, glowstone, redstone, but the thing that it does need is mithril. And I believe we can get this from, uh, looking at the tooltip there, elemental chamber in the nether. And I think we found one of these. I think this is where the weird blazes were spawning. So I'm keen to go get that. Uh, but of course, to get that, I don't, I don't really want to die. <laughs> um, so we'll probably use another one of these dragon egg omelets whenever we get around to that. Uh, but one thing I would like to do is put more magic protection on my armor. Now I've got a couple magic protection books here. These I got from the mob farm. Uh, this is the biggest they get magic protection for. So I'm pretty keen just to get another couple to put on our armor and make sure we've got the full magic protection set. And in order to do that, I'm thinking I'll make a typesetting table and printing press from Bibliocraft. I think I've got everything here. It should be pretty straightforward. Uh, Altar of Corruption. This is kind of the only different thing in this in this crafting recipe. It uses corrupted stone, which uses corrupted shards, which we got from our mob, mob grinder downstairs. Uh, the other thing it uses is dark stone, which is just glowstone and obsidian. Uh, but that's pretty straightforward. We got that stuff easy now. Uh, blocks of iron, straightforward. Diamond, blaze rod, you know the deal. So we should be able to just crank one of those out. And the other thing we need is a typesetting table. And this requires a printing press chase. Easy. So between these two machines, we should be able to duplicate these uh, enchanted books with some ink. I think I'll place them over here for now, just so we can... There we go. I will need to make another, at least another one printing press chase. I'll make a couple for now. And that should also complete the quest, which I think gives us reading glasses and a Tome of Knowledge. Uh, the Tome of Knowledge draws experience. It's pretty cool. Uh, although we don't lose experience when dying. So, I mean, I don't know what the difference is between keeping it in the book and using it. But either way, we've got some reading glasses, which will be very useful because I think that's what lets us see what's going on with these machines. Yeah. So without the glasses, nothing comes up. With the glasses, you can actually see what we need to do here. So the book goes here. I'll throw some chases in here. And then I think we confirm the book. And that turns it into a plate. And so now we've got this enchanted plate, Magic Protection 4. And I think if we throw that in here, give this bad boy some ink. throw on some empty books and it should start printing them out we only need another two we used one to make the plate so we need three I'm not quite sure is one not sure how many it does 
two, some more ink, I think. Yeah, it looks like it can do one more. Perfect. And there we go. That's uh, that's four Magic Protection four books. And I should be able to use this with our armor here. Got a bunch of solidified experience here from the, the mob grinder. So that should be pretty good to get these levels back up and going. So we got magic protection four on the helmet. We'll do the chest plate next. Pants. And the boots. Oh, I see they already have fire protection on them. So we actually can't put it on those. Interesting. That should be fine though. Throw the armor back on. Uh, before we go back to the nether hunting for the mithril, I would like to make a player launcher. This was mentioned in the comments in my last video by, I think it was Lulu, that is apparently way better than the slime sling. And it's real easy, block quartz, slime, glowstone, diamond. So hopefully hold and use to launch yourself in selected direction. I'll give it a go outside. We'll see see how good this bad boy is. Interesting, interesting. I hit the wall there. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> that gets us going pretty quick, doesn't it? Sheesh. Oh my goodness. Wow, it's fast. It doesn't go quite as high, but boy, it goes fast. Wow. <laughs> it must give us a potion effect after using it because yeah, that's wild. Awesome. So with that, I think, yeah, I'll grab my shield. Uh, I might take a bite of these dragon egg omelets get that health boost <laughs> this is so much health now i'll head over this way i'm trying to remember where the structure was that i saw See if I can find it on the map actually. Surely it's there. <laughs> Hard to tell. But I reckon I will head this way. See if we can. Oh, yeah, there it is. Wow. Uh, oh, sheesh. That Bowman. Alright, there it is. I'm just gonna go. Go for it. Gonna go in. Try and break some of these spawners. Maybe I should just be breaking the. Uh... <laughs> I think that's all the spawners. Oh no, one more. Oh, this extra health is great. Get the shield up and we'll get rid of these. That's, that's all of them. Mine up this mithril. Nice. Well, that was actually pretty straightforward. Now we just got to get out of here and make it back home so with that I think it's probably time to make a philosopher's stone if we can which means making an advanced crafting table uh, so we need to make a couple more basic crafting tables so let me get some resources together and uh, we'll see if we can do this I think I've got everything here that we need for the advanced crafting table. We do need, of course, two basic crafting tables. So I had to make another two of those. That's why we've got, we've got three here. 
Uh, but I did figure out that you can make them with this bottom recipe here and it keeps the basic crafting table that you use in here. Uh, so it means we don't need the block of aluminum brass every time. We just need to make these basic components and crafting tables. So it made it a little bit easier. Still a bunch of, bunch of iron and stuff, not too bad. Uh, but for the advanced crafting table, of course, pretty much the same as the basic one. We just need these advanced components instead of basic components. And the advanced components are made pretty much the same way again just with gold instead of iron at the bottom, still the luminescence and black iron slate. So I'll make a bunch of these black iron slate. I think I need nine and I'll make eight of these advanced components. Uh, four of them will go around one of the black iron ingots for the advanced catalyst. And that should be it with the other black iron slate to make the advanced crafting table i will need to put down one of these basic crafting tables to make it in there and there we go advanced crafting table more fabrication and as things go i'll just put it on the end here oh look at that big crafting table we're progressing cool oh stoked that we have that things like this philosopher's stone and the transmutation stuff is going to be so useful so we need four glowstone four redstone and a mithril looks like we can do it oh philosopher's stone stoked about this one absolutely stoked uh, and straight away might as well make the transmutation table with some stone and obsidian transmute this into that uh, I think I'll put this somewhere. Yeah, I might just put it here for now. Easy access. Oh, this is so good. Look at all this stuff. I think there's a quest reward that we can get somewhere in here as well. Yeah, Book of the Alchemist. Not sure what this does, but we'll have a look. Yeah. Cool. It's just a manual for all the all the stuff. We'll probably put this inside our Akashic Tome. You remember this bad boy? And put it into this chest, never to be looked at again. <laughs> but I think we can teach this thing stuff, like the obsidian there. And if I throw a diamond in, I can then pull obsidian out. <laughs> Oh, transmutation is so good. It has been so long since I've played a pack that has Project E in it. Far, far too long. I'm pretty much just gonna go through and just teach this transmutation table as much as I can from, from what we have here. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do some teaching. Uh, I turned our transmutation table into a stone transmutation table. It has a bit of a better UI for sort of searching stuff up. Uh, I've taught this thing most of the recipes. I think pretty much everything that we have. I haven't put everything in it. Like you can see, we've still got stuff here. Uh, whether we do or not, I'm, I'm on the fence. I guess, I don't know why we wouldn't, right? Might as well just throw everything we can in there. Uh, we've got about 600,000 EMC in there at the moment. And we can search up things like emeralds and see that 39 emeralds worth uh it's pretty good 
But figured we've already made so much progress today. I might as well just keep going, right? So I think I'm going to try and make the elite crafting table, the tier three one. And I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got everything we need to do it. Uh, I just need to pick this up. So we need to make a bunch of the basic components. 36, I think. And of course, four of these basic catalysts, which then turns into a bunch of basic crafting tables. And we got four. We can throw that one back. And of course, we need to turn these four into two advanced crafting tables. And that uses a bunch of advanced components. There should be everything we need, I think, to make our two advanced crafting tables. And then lastly, we need to make a bunch of these elite components and then a block of mithril and a block of manulin. The block of mithril, easy as, we've got a ton of mithril now that we looted it from the nether. Make one of those. And the block of manulin, yeah, it's just pouring out here. So I'll leave that going. While that's running, I will make the components we need. I think we need eight of these. Grab a bit more. We've got heaps of this black iron. It's super easy with the uh, transmutation. Here we go. That's it. All we need is that block of manulin, which we have. And we should be able to make a elite crafting table. Look at that. Now this is a big crafting table. And since we made that, it now means we're officially in chapter two, I think. Check the quest book. Yeah, chapter two. Here's the trophy. I like that it has a flux crystal on it. I'd be very keen to get into applied energistics. <laughs> so with all this progression, uh, why stop there, right? I think it'd be good to start generating some passive power uh, even if it's just a little bit and i think that these thermoelectric generators are probably the best way to do it i think they're recommended for sort of early game power so we might as well get into it there's a couple quests in the book that actually give us these thermoelectric generators as rewards one requires us to make this heavy engineering block and the other is even easier i'm pretty sure we just need a block of redstone so that'll be no issues Yeah, there we go, one thermoelectric generator. And of course, to make this heavy engineering block, we just need a couple of pistons, an electrical ingot. I need to make a bunch of steel plates, uh, which we can then turn into a couple steel mechanical components. And that should be everything. Heavy engineering block, there we go. Should be the other quest. Oh yeah. Gives us another thermoelectric generator. Uh, I figure I might as well make a few more of these thermoelectric generators as well. So I've just melted down some constantin. And our good old redstone clock here to get those ingots out. As well as that, I know I need a bunch of copper. A little bit of iron. And some seal. It is quite slow, but uh, I've left it going for a while, so we've got quite a bit here, which is great. And I think I have everything here now to make another three of these thermoelectric generators. I decided to make three just because I think the five would fit well with what I'm planning for the setup here. Now, these thermoelectric generators, they generate power based on the difference in temperature between blocks either side of them. So the classic, of course, would be lava one side, water the other, and the difference in temperature between the water and the lava generates power. But I was thinking we're probably at a point where we can try to get a bit more out of these generators. So I'm keen to make a magma crucible, and I'm gonna use the magma crucible to melt a few things down that we have. So I'd like to make gelid cryothium for the cold, 
and blazing pyrothium for the hot. And these are pretty much at opposite ends of the coldest thing we can get and the hottest thing we can get. So it should generate a little bit more power than if we just had lava and water. Magma Crucible should be pretty easy though. I think I've got everything here. Here you go, Magma Crucible. Of course, we do need to power this. I think for now, I'll just throw it beside the simple sterling generator here. Of course, to get these liquids that we need, uh, we need to melt down some different things. So for the gelid cryothium, we need to melt down some cryothium dust. And the cryothium dust comes from snowballs, redstone, and blizz powder. Uh, I think I need a couple buckets of this gelid cryothium, and one cryothium dust gives me a quarter of a bucket. I need eight of this stuff, which means that we would need eight blizz powder, four snowballs, four redstone. Blizz powder, we get from the blizz rod, but I think if I, yeah, if I craft it, it'll only get two. So I'll put it in the pulverizer. So I put that back down. And that should give us four per blizz rod, which should be exactly as many as we need. And of course, redstone's easy. We've got tons of that. And snowballs, well, <laughs> just need to take a quick step outside. There's our eight blizz powder. Make eight cryothium. Throw these in the crucible. A little bit slow, but it is melting down there. Now for the blazing pyrothium, we need to mount down some pyrothium dust, which similar case to the cryothium, uh, just sulfur, redstone, and a couple blaze powder. Uh, so we need eight of the blaze powder, for redstone for sulfur blaze powder of course easy as we've got tons of blaze rods uh redstone again easy sulfur is the only thing that i wasn't sure about but it looks like we've got heaps here anyway so we're totally fine i can just craft these up And then when the cryothium's done in the crucible, I'll throw these in. And I think I'll just put it down here in the ground for now. We'll have our five thermoelectric generators. And I'll fill these spots in with the gelid cryothium and blazing pyrothium. I'm thinking in order to make this look all right and not just have wires everywhere, I'm actually going to put these energy conduits underneath. So they'll sort of pull power out of the bottom of the thermoelectric generators and then I'll just have it coming out the side. Ah! <laughs> what? I didn't know that a simple sterling generator had gravity. Sweet. That should be all the wiring going under there and it comes up over this side here. And then with our last couple buckets, the blazing pyrothium done. Yeah, look at that. So, pretty sure this should just work. I will just place some glass on top of these just so I'm ready to cover these up because I'm not sure if they have any effect on the world around them or not. So there's gel cryothium. Oh. <laughs> Prime example there, some snow from the gelid cryothium. Pyrothium. Gelid cryothium again. Sweet. Those are all covered in. There we go. This is our first bit of passive power generation. I don't think we really need to do anything to upkeep this. Our cryothium pyrothium combo should just keep everything generating power passively. And I think according to the wiki online anyway, it should generate like 31 RF per tick. 
So five of these would be, you know, 150. So it's not a crazy amount. These energy conduits should, should be able to keep up. Now we can get a few mach more machines going here, get things moving. Uh, I'm thinking we're going to sort of move and upgrade our base soon. Uh, I wouldn't mind trying to make this portal to the void. They of course, have a, a classic void dimension base. Now, of course, this is a bit complicated. I mean, empowered void crystal, we will have to set up an empower from actually additions. And we will need to make an ME controller. Uh, all of this does look kind of... Kind of rough, to be honest. Uh, would be worth it, because I just, I kind of want to get started on a... On a base in a big, big open area, you know? So we'll see. Maybe maybe we won't be able to do that. For now, though, that's probably a good time to wrap up this episode. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Uh, we, we made a decent amount of progress this episode. Uh, I'm keen to get things moving at a good pace, though. We really need to get into this. Uh, anyway, I'll uh, see you in the next episode.